Hi there everyone, welcome to Dandelion Dims. This is where I'm going to explain some of the Delphi questions that are asked in theory. Today we're going to have a look at trace tables. In a theory exam, you will often be asked to create a trace table or complete a trace table as part of question 5, the solution development section. You will be provided with some given code and then often also the headings for your trace table. The codes sometimes have line numbers next to them, as you can see here in green. But if they don't, I suggest you add them. It just helps you to keep track of what you are busy with and on which line needs to be executed next. If you had to create the headings yourself, just go to the code from top to bottom and then take each variable that will change on a line and place it only once in a column at the top. So you'll see here I have inum and then I ans that will change. On a for loop, it will be your for loop variable that will change. If you have an if statement, you could also put your condition in there, which will then have either value of true or false. I won't put I ans there again because it's there already. And then if we have a line to display, then we'll just add display to the last column. The line number column is not always required, but I always add it to help me keep track of which line needs to be executed. So I suggest you add that too. Don't continue to number your line numbers. Uh, some of the numbers, like in this case our for loop, line 3 and 4 will be executed many times. The question sometimes asks us to explain what the given code is doing. By completing the trace table and then sometimes it tells you what the code is supposed to be doing and that there's an error in the code and you have to determine why the error is there by completing your trace table. Today we'll look at an example of working out what this given code is doing. In an exam if you are required to create a trace table always start it at the top of a new page so that you don't end up having to flip back and forward if it happens to go over two pages. I've completed the first two lines here of the trace table for you um, because this is often given. We have been given the code inum is assigned to 5. So in line 1, I am completing 5 under the column inum. In one line, you'll only complete the line number and then one of the other cells here. I'm just using Excel for this. This will obviously be on paper um, in your theory exam. In the next line here, line 2, I answer was given a value of 1. Now we get to the for loop. In the for loop line, that would be our line 3, the variable k is changing and the first value it receives is 2. So on line 3, k is changing to the value 2. Our next line that will be executed is line 4. And on this line, we are multiplying i ans with k. So the last value that i ans was, at this stage there is only one, the 1 will be multiplied by 2 and that will now change i ons and it will give it the value of 2. The next line that is executed would be my for loop line. So I'll go back to line 3 and on this line k used to be 2 but now it will be changed to 3. I will then execute line 4 again where the last value of i ons is multiplied with 3. So here it's saying i ons multiplied by k, so 2 times 3, and that will give me the value of 6. And so I will continue to go back to line 3 where my k variable is changing. It used to be 3, and on this line here it will now have a value of 4. Line 4 is executed again, and i ons gets the value of i ons times by k, that's 6 times 4. So in this i ons column, I will place the value of 24. Line 3 is executed again, and here k is changed to 5, and now in the next line, line 4, I'm going to multiply 24 with 5, because i ons 
times k is the 24 times 5. Now this is the part where you usually go wrong because you want to now display the output. But in the memory of the computer, line 3 executes one last time and it is changed there to 6. But because the inum here is 5 and 6 is one higher than 5, it will not execute line 4. The next line that would be executed now would be our display line, which is line 5. And in that column there, I will just place the answer I ons is displayed, so therefore I have 120 displayed. Can you now work out what this code was doing? It was calculating the factorial of 5. So it is looping from 2 to 5 and it is multiplying the 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5, which would give me 120. Trace tables is part of question 5 of the theory exams at the end of each year. And this is always the worst answered question overall by all learners in this exam. Therefore, I created a Dandelion Dims workbook in which you can practice for this section because there's no textbook available to help you prepare for these questions. It's called Dims because it includes data information management, which is question 4 and deals with databases and has some questions for those as well. And then also solution development, including the trace tables and algorithms, layout of the GUI that you have to criticize, and questions about text files, arrays, loops, and so on. Please leave some comments if you have any questions and I'll get to them as soon as I can. Thank you very much for watching Dandelion Dims. I hope to see you soon.